Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective, going to 5,000 subscribers September 7th, Texas LSU. We're just three sleeps away. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys, we're what? Since you've been gone, we're less than 300 subscribers away from our goal, I'm trying to speak this into existence for the sake of the channel. So if you rock with us, if you like, enjoy this, our conversation, subscribe. Yeah. We appreciate it. Absolutely. I missed you. I missed you, man. I hey, this is the first opening game that I've missed in eight years. I so know. It's, it's, well, it uh, blows my mind, but you know, it's for my parents. So you know, happy anniversary, mom, dad. <laughs> like so. Happy but, anniversary, mama. Apparently, LA has a Longhorn Network, so I'm. I was oh, happy. that's dope. <laughs> so, that's dope. Yeah. And Christy celebrated a birthday. Yep. Uh, yeah, yesterday was her birthday. So that's, yeah, awesome. uh, happy birthday, Christy, as well. So. Full, you had a lot going on. I did. It's LSU yeah. week, you know. Yeah, now we can finally kick off football season. Now right, officially Tran is back. <laughs> um, so overall, we're just, I'm excited to have you back. I, mi I really did miss you. And yeah. I'm glad you had a good trip, though, with the family. You guys went to the aquarium, did a whole bunch of fun stuff. I so did. I did. happy to have y'all back, uh, have you back. Before we get into LSU and deep dive into that, um, I know everyone didn't really get to hear your Louisiana Tech comments. You watched it on TV. I did. Just, what did you see from your vantage point? So I was very happy the way the game turned out, of course. Uh, we didn't show too much, too many wrinkles in our offense or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we dominated the game from start to finish. Uh, things that were good were our blocking schemes are fantastic. And I'm not just talking about our offensive line. There's Our wide receivers were up there getting sealed blocks at the end. Uh, one of the most impressive blocks that I've seen is was by Sam Cosme on a pull and taking out a an athletic cornerback. And he did that twice that I saw, which I've never really seen a Texas offensive lineman be able to pull and be able to finish blocks the way that was. So that was very reassuring to me. Uh, things I, Another positive that I saw was Sam Ellinger was fantastic across the board, but one of the things that people weren't talking about was he wasn't really taking punishment. Uh, there was that one bad hit that he had, mm -hmm. but we saw him run out of bounds a couple times. We saw him slide. We saw him dive. You know, those are, those are last year ones he's trying to get extra yardage for. Sure. A uh, little disappointed in the defensive backs. I mean, that, that's been touched on quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I do expect us to be better. Um, the only coverages that I was really upset were were uh, the seam routes in the middle, like the middle uh, them going over the middle because we were not guarding that very well. Uh, I thought I thought down the sidelines we were pretty good, and I think by design we were letting them. I think we were going off of LSU's video uh, tape last year of them just burning them with their speed. We were letting them catch the little five seven yard Underneath, routes yeah. and then just hey make the play. Sure. Which I thought we did a good job at making tackles. I mean, there there were some missed tackles, but I thought I thought we did a good job at tackling in space. Yeah, no, they did rally to the ball well. I thought we showed a lot of good team speed, as we've discussed, mm -hmm. uh, which which all carries over and bodes well for us against LSU, right? So um, overall, like I said before, guys, I was very pleased, and I, I, I think was. you were yes, I was. Um, as well. But getting to the meat of of why we're here, right? You know, the LSU Tigers. Coming into Austin, Texas. Oh, it's that's a prime this time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, three sleeps. <laughs> uh, prime time matchup, top ten matchup. You know, we actually moved up to number nine. Uh, they're number six. College game day in town. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of connections and parallels and storylines. You know, one of the things that you know, I think it was Chip Brown that brought it up immediately in the press conference, and Tom did not like it. Was Hey, you almost, we were about to sign the contract what to go to you? LSU and, you know, which would have unseated Coach O, but you didn't. And here we are. And Coach O is still there. And it's awkward between the two of you. We have the parallel of you offering Joe Burrow to go to Ohio State when you're there. So a lot of things going on. I, I don't know why it'd be awkward between him and Coach O. It, it, wouldn't you think it'd be more so Coach O and the LSU administration? Well, remember they took Woodward from A and M, so oh, they have a new yeah. they have a new AD. This was also the previous AD that was instructed that they were supposed to go get the hot name at the time, which was. Tom Herman, Tom Herman. Yep. because at that point, I believe uh, Coach O still had the interim tag. 
coming from yes, when he yes, unseated from, uh, um, Les Miles. So, you know, there's a lot of back and forth there. I think that actually, you know, one could say that's motivation for Coach O and his team was, you know, this was a guy that they wanted over me. And so I know if that was me, that would motivate me even more. To, you know, of course, of course. You know, it's like, just hey, like those little extra. Hey, I beat the guy that you guys wanted. Just rubbing absolutely, in face. absolutely. Because there's people, but, and and those the, these LSU fans that have come on this channel and all that type of stuff. These are the same people that wanted Tom Herman back in 2016. Yeah. Don't let it fool you. So I'm I'm actually a little bit on the opposite side of a. Hey, I don't think we need any, anyone needs any bulletin board material. I mean, I think this is if you can't get up for this game just because sure. of what this game is, sure. you shouldn't be here. Like everyone's asking, I had a whole bunch of people ask me, oh, "What about Chase on um, talking trash about Ellinger?" So what? <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> like yeah, it didn't bother I mean, me. It, it doesn't yeah. bother me. It, it didn't seem like it bothered him. I mean, legitimately, this is a top ten matchup. This is honestly. I, this is the biggest game I think DKR has had in 20 years. I think it's e- it's even bigger than when Ohio, Ohio State, State came. came because Ohio State we were breaking in a new quarterback. That's true. As opposed to that's true. Colt McCoy. Yeah, Colt yeah. McCoy was second game. This is this is Sam. He's I think primed for a big on a Heisman yeah, run. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I, I think this is hopefully and just the feeling around the town. I mean, I haven't even been downtown, but just around work. I mean, people. It's people, a buzz. Random no. people are asking me for tickets, and I'm like, ah, bro, I don't even have a ticket, so I'm not gonna. Get, <laughs> I I'm not. Yeah, like, I was like, so. Uh, hey I'm, man, baby, get to five k. <laughs> get some tickets. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm with you, man. The buzz, the buzz around Austin being here. Sorry, I got some. No, you're good. Speaking of Austin, all that yeah. mold. Uh, the buzz around Austin, people, you know, everyone being here, just excited, right? And we've been talking. Everyone's been kind of talking about LSU, but it's here now. We I know. Feel I know. it, and this is a great opportunity. I think people feel the opportunity uh, for Texas. Now, I want to get into just some certain things that we want to break down in terms of the matchup um, that we think are advantageous for Texas. Mm-hmm. And then I also want to go into some things that are possible concerns for us. Okay. Um, starting with the things that are that we we've, we've we've kind of discussed and I'm glad you're back so I can really just go into this with you. You know, where are areas of opportunity? We talk about that at work all the time, right? In our, in areas our, of opportunity. Areas of opportunity for Texas. I think controlling the clock especially if a team's going to a spread offense if you keep them off the field it makes them start to force things because they're mm-hmm. they're so used to scoring things real time quickly. of possession and i think that's where we excel actually we do is that we're, we're, we're outstanding methodical that. Mm-hmm. you know so uh uh we can we why can are we good we, why are we so good at time of possession because we don't have explosive plays we we have we have a i mean we have a what fifteen games now? We haven't had a play sure. over forty yards. I, uh, but what I'm but. getting at there is, we have very good discipline. Oh yeah, yeah. We one of the things, one of the ways you maintain the football is keeping penalties down. Mm-hmm. We're really good at third and makeables because we don't get those holding calls. We don't. We don't. We don't. Half of it, especially early in the season, because somebody said this on TV the other day, and it was a good quote. Early games like this, big games, it's normally about you lose the game more than you win the game. What does that mean? You still got those jitters. Guys aren't confident yet, and, and make those mental mistakes. Those mental mistakes yeah. where it's a you know missed assignment, or you know somebody gets lazy and holds on the perimeter on a big play, and it destroys momentum. We've actually been really good at avoiding those. And then when we do have a penalty, we're good at getting some chunk yardage back. And making and having those third and makeables and having a good success in mm-hmm. terms of our third down conversion rate. Yep. That's why I think our time possession is so good. We have to give credit to not just Sam Ellinger but our coaching staff yes, because absolutely, they talk about their training all the time. And it's it's not just time of possession at that point too. It's also cleaning up the the mental mistakes that you're talking about. Those penalties, you know, teaching proper technique. Herb Hand has been fantastic with mm-hmm. our offensive He's line. He's been one of the catalysts of that, for sure. And um, I remember before he was here, I, I could count probably about five different offensive line penalties that we'd get per game when Charlie Strong was here. So, you know, the discipline, sure. the discipline's there. 
Um, with that said, we this year we haven't faced the athletes that LSU has. And when you get athletes on there, it, that's where sometimes someone gets beat. And the first thing that they do is grab. They grab. Yep, yeah. that's the first thing. But I, I think that our offensive line is very athletic. But okay, but going to the advantages, yeah. George or LSU hasn't played a team as athletic as us. Sure. And they're talking about you know they held Georgia Southern to whatever ninety eight yards or whatever. Some part of me even wants to throw some of that game tape out because they're running they're a triple option attack, right? With you know the what, Georgia very, Southern Georgia, Georgia okay. Southern right. Yeah. Where they're they're running a particular type of scheme that's a nothing like what we'll, we'll, what we will present, mm-hmm. and b we match up athletically with LSU. Do you hear me? We match up athletically with LSU. I know a lot of you guys are going to come in the comments and start talking trash and and, and dislike the video. I'm, I, I welcome is, the smoke. Is, we ma- and you know why I say this is the, this is SEC big boy football? No, no. You know why. <laughs> You know why that's, that some of that is 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 horseshit because yeah. you brought you told me this. What did you tell me before the video start, started? Look at every one of our defensive players. Uh, their offer lists actually. Go to twenty four seven. Look at who um, offered them. I think it's multiple SEC um, teams. Mm-hmm. I think there's multiple SEC offers for each one of the players. So everybody in the country was going after Anthony Cook. Mm-hmm. What about Everybody Brandon had, Jones? Caden Stearns. Keandre Colburn. Caden Stearns was an LSU. Then that's McCullough. the thing. Yeah, <laughs> Jeffrey McCulloch. That was a big – those those guys had uh, – even Gary Johnson going back to last year had an yeah. offer from Bama. Well, he was, like, he was committed to Bama. He was committed yeah. to Bama. Caden Stearns was committed to LSU, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, look, 2017, we lose Chase on – to LSU, 2018, we come back and take Caden Stearns, who's an LSU commit, flip him over to Texas. So, again, the narrative of Devin DuVernay was a highly regarded recruit coming out of high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, across the board, Brennan Eagles was comped coming out. Uh, was Des Bryant from Lufkin? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, but, yes, he was. Um, uh, Brennan Eagles was comped to Des Bryant coming out of Lufkin. These brothers aren't just – it's not like there's this gap, yeah. right? Again, go look at people's offers. Uh, these all these brothers on Texas had SEC offers. Yeah. So again, the narrative of of and our defense, believe it or not, and I know a lot of LSU fans that have not paid attention to Texas football, and you're just looking at a a you know preview sheet or magazine or what have you. By the way, go pick up your copy of Horns Illustrated, the 25th edition, at Austin Bergstrom Airport, best in the business, or HEB. Or H E B for those of you who are coming in town. But magazines about I'm talking about just in general, whether it's Athlon or whatever, you see, oh, Texas has three returning starters. But it's like the team speed is improved. We've yeah. recruited for the scheme. I think we our have a bunch of four and five st- improved too. Yeah. I mean, so the narr- this narrative of is LSU fast, athletic Absolutely. as hell, Absolutely. unbelievable Absolutely. athletes everywhere. Absolutely. One hundred percent. We got this. B.J. Foster was the number one safety in the country, according to ESPN. If you I, went to I another, Overshone, was Overshone right and another, him. depending yeah. on whether yeah. you look at twenty four, one, both of them were number one, depending mm-hmm. on the recruiting service. Yeah, that doesn't include include Brandon Jones, who was number one in twenty sixteen, mm-hmm. or Caden Stearns being flipped, who was the MVP of the U.S. All American game. All these brothers are on the field. Yeah. So they can play. They, they can, can play. play. <laughs> I mean, so this narrative of the speed. It's the same thing for Texas fans also going after, oh, well, our quarterback is so much better than an LSU's quarterback because sure. Tom Herman recruited Joe, Joe Burrow right. to actually play to for him at Ohio play State. For Ohio State. So, and I mean, to play in his scheme. And, and that, it works both ways. It works I mean, both there's, ways. There's, there's, and that's what's so intriguing about this matchup is that, you know, you got athlete versus athlete and. Absolutely. All the connections that you were talking about earlier in the video. So, so um, the other thing I wanted to touch on in terms of advantages for us is our coaching staff. I agree. Uh, Tom Herman has uh, gotten the best of Dave Aranda in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 58-0 in the, um, at the, in the uh, Ohio State-Wisconsin Big Ten Championship game with his third-string quarterback. Um, and, again, we talk about Tom Herman in big games. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Shout out to 12 Gauge. Yeah. <laughs> but we talk about Tom Herman in big games. We talk about his, you know, just him here at Texas, right? 
I think even that has been understated. Yeah, he, he's a perfectionist. So if you guys actually watch the game on TV at halftime, they they did a quick interview with him and he he was angry. And this is one of the this is one of the things that I really love about him is that he called out everyone saying that was the worst offensive possession that I've seen mm-hmm. uh, from this team all year, uh, from the coaching staff all the way down to everyone. You know, we cannot have that. He understands the importance of situational football. He understood that you know we should step on this team's throat and go in right now. Go, go mm-hmm. in with the uh, the momentum of either scoring just a field goal at halftime. Just just that that specifically. Uh, said a lot about him as as a coach and him going to get those extra those extra head coaching minds. I don't know if LSU doing has done that has gotten the analysts that we have, but just having another perspective uh, from a coaching perspective on how to game plan for these sure. fake situations is is huge. I think that's a that's a huge advantage. Well, LSU they've you know to give them credit they've gone out and they got Joe Brady from uh, New Orleans Saints, okay. who is their their passing game coordinator, who's one of the young, you know, kind of Sean McVay ish. I don't even know if he's. I don't even think he's thirty years old, but he's he's performed the mind meld with uh, Mr. Steve Harrington, aka Joe Burrow, and they <laughs> they're connected, you know, with that that spread, and and he's done a good job of bringing over some of the cool concepts, even in the Georgia Southern game. I know so you said throw the tape out to some degree, but. Uh, some of the passing concepts they had with their running backs, getting them involved in the pass game. Mm-hmm. Those are things we're going to have to defend. Uh, but to your to the point is, I'm not worried about it because it's still it's their second game in this offense. They really haven't had to run this offense under pressure. They haven't had their first when they when they sputter and they have a quick three and out trying to run tempo and it affects their defense. These are issues that we see consistently in the spread because we face it so much time after time and again in the Big 12. Uh, and I want to get to, to one other thing because, um, you know, there's, there's a guy out there that also makes um, Big 12 videos, R.J. Young, who makes videos regarding the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of R.J. I love his content and, and uh, his passion for his team and, and uh, how consistent he is with with everything he does, a as a YouTuber and b just as a fan of you know the content that he produces. Yeah. He made a prediction. I watched the video uh, where he touched on Texas versus LSU, uh, and and you know he he made it sound as if we were going to get curb stomped in Austin, uh, courtesy of LSU, and he told some half truths in there. And I like RJ, I really do. But there were some half truths that he told in that video, uh, talking about. Tom Herman's spread offense and the numbers game, which is true, and how we read the box, and we won't be effective because we only have one scholarship running back and count to Ingram, and that's not enough to beat mighty LSU. Mm-hmm. A few things we wanted to debunk here. Who uh, ran for over 200 yards on LSU last year in 2018? What team was that? Chomp Chomp. Florida <laughs> Gators, right? Yep, Chomp Chomp. What <laughs> offense they run? Oh, I, I think it's similar offense. Very similar to what he was talking about, right? Yeah. With Urban Meyer, yeah. power spread. They're, they're from the same coaching. Dan team. Mullen, yeah, same, same coaching yeah, same tree. Coaching also, tree. also an offensive coordinator under Urban Meyer. Uh, they ran downhill essentially with two running backs and Felipe and Franks, Felipe Franks yep. who's not a runner. He's not really a good passer. Either, and they ran for over two hundred <laughs> yards on an LSU defense that had Devin White. And y'all saw and the greedy. video and greedy and greedy. And y'all saw the video with Billy that we did. Billy's, you know, my good friend who's an LSU fan. I thought he did a wonderful job mm-hmm. of presenting his team's perspective. Absolutely. Um, and, and I'm glad I was able to share that, of uh, an opinion of an objective fan. One of the things that Billy said in the video was the last team that ran the ball down our throats was Florida. Yep. We run the same offense they do. But we arguably have better personnel because Florida was in year one under Dan Mullen running that. Okay, so that's that's number and one. Would you put Would you put Sam Ellinger as a better quarterback? Than Absolutely, Felipe than Harris? Felipe Frank. Y'all saw him against Miami. Enough said, right? Okay. Um, next thing I want to move on to in terms of RJ's points about the spread uh, in regards to the running backs, right? Yes, it is true. Keonta Ingram is R one, as he said, right? The one running back that we have. But as you guys saw in the Louisiana Tech game, John, what were some ways? That we help supplement the run game, right? Little, little swing passes, uh, little wide receiver screens, bubble screens that we talked mm-hmm. about with with our offensive line actually pulling to actually help with blocking and our our 
wide receivers blocking as well, too. So our blocking schemes are pr- pretty good on those uh, wide receiver screens as opposed to Greg Davis' world. <laughs> but, uh, Bubble even, screen even though he's Greg back. Davis. He back. So, so, so to that point, I, there's three things of why I say he was telling half-truths. Number one, you just brought it up. The screens, getting it, getting the ball out is an extension, an extension of the yeah. run game. So when you don't have the backs, and, and even if we did, even if we did have the backs, that would still be a part of the game plan. Mm-hmm. That is still a staple within their offense of reading the box. It's not as just as simple as a uh, running option or quarterback option with, uh, you know, trying to outflank the linebackers. It's also getting the ball out on the perimeter if we have yeah. two blockers out there. This is why a lot of times what you'll see Cade Brewer lined up in the slot or bigger bodies out there to help leverage that, right, against the field or the boundary or what have you. Uh, the other thing is Devin Duvernay, Jake Smith. So when you look back at the old school Urban Meyer Florida offenses, Percy Harvin took a ton of carries, right? Uh, even going back to Ohio like State. 70. Yeah, he would take. He took uh, 70 carries in twenty in 2008, and he finished 10 yards short of being their leading rusher on the season behind Tim Tebow. So neither of them were running backs. Yeah. Right? Percy Harvin is... They won the national championship. They won the national championship that year against Oklahoma. So, to, to Mr. Young's point, when you look at what Perc- what they were doing with Percy Harvin, emotioning him in the backfield, lining him up, running that dive, running that inside zone, those are carries that we can take off of Keontae Ingram through Devin DuVernay. We saw a snippet of this in Louisiana, against Louisiana Tech at midfield. We went for it. Who ran the ball? DuVernay. DuVernay did. Uh, fourth and two or whatever. So Somewhere. don't you think that they could help supplement some of the carries through Devin Duvernay? You don't think that they have packages for Jake Smith to motion in and to hand the ball off or to have some sort of speed option look? Different ways to get people the ball in space. That's the point of the power spread. And then we also have QB power, which was our number one. Absolutely. Yeah. Number one best executed play that we did why do we execute qb power so well a yeah because of the extra blocker but that offensive line yeah the offensive line the extra blocker we 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 own the line of scrimmage and you have to respect the fact that if he does the little tebow fake like he's running and then little jump pass thing you still have to respect you have to respect all that but my point is none of that comes to fruition without sound blocking from the mm-hmm. offensive line. And that's why I said there's three – RJ's telling half-truths about the, the spread because, yes, it is true that Roshan Johnson is our, our backup running back and he's you know a converted quarterback and he's a hell of an athlete. And I still think – you were saying earlier uh, off-camera – about hey, we're gonna be counting on Roshan to help spell Ingram. Yeah, and it's we're not gonna five to six carries a game. They're not gonna try perfect. to overwhelm him. Yeah, and so barring injury, you know, we're talking about five to six. It's not gonna mm-hmm. be. Oh, oh, he oh. needs to take fifteen carries. Right, he's no. he's, he's he's taking. I don't thirty anticipate, snaps. I don't <laughs> anticipate that. So I mean, you just need you just need him just to get a, just get a quick blow. And then so, uh, get Ingram back in. And Ingram, agreed. I think, I, I feel comfortable with 18 to 22 snaps. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Carries. Carries, yeah. that's what I meant. Not, yeah. not snaps. Carries. And those yeah. are just, we're just talking about carries. We're not even talking about touches or, or, or what he'll do in the pass game because he's a very effective pass mm-hmm. catcher. These are different ways to create matchups to get these guys the ball in space. That's the point. So going back, just to review against R.J. Young's point, three things. The screens and moving the ball on the perimeter – Supplementing through different wide receivers and and, and and motioning into the backfield and handing off as well as the quarterback run game. And the third thing is our offensive line is physical as hell and they are going to create holes. Trust me, they will create holes and they will create running lanes against LSU and their defensive line. LSU is very good up front and very, and very talented. But I believe the the cohesiveness that I'm seeing with our offensive line, what we're seeing from Samuel Cosme and Parker Braun, Zach Shackelford, they are going to well, create I some think running lanes. Hand, uh, when he was in Auburn, they averaged close to like seven, 170 yards a game just rushing the ball. I mean, so he he has experience against this defense, mm-hmm. and yeah, they have a new offense, but the defensive coordinator is the same the same guy. So I mean, uh, I, I think I think he's going to be well prepared to. Get, 
get the blocking schemes where we can get you know open running lanes against this team. So we have not only the personnel, but in terms of and we don't need 170 personnel. yards. No, no, at no all. I don't. Like, but we have the physical personnel and we have the coaching on the back end. And to your point, the analyst on the back end that will help supplement us in this game. Now, yes, we have concerns. I'm not just trying to blow smoke. Yes. And again, I'm not trying to say RJ doesn't know what the hell he's talking about or anything like that. I just thought he was telling some half-truths on his video today. No disrespect to the brother, but wanted to, to tell the whole story about our Texas offense. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to concerns that we have, um, our corners, right? Yep. And, and, and you're anticipating your boy, Anthony Cook, is going to start opposite of Jalen Green. Uh, what do you need to see from him? I need to see – I wouldn't say – because I don't think we're going to press them at all. I, th I think we're going to kind of play the same thing as keep them in front of us and hopefully make tackles in space. Uh, the good thing is that uh, – we were talking about this earlier – is that I like the fact that he has had that experience in big game situation and, most importantly, the experience in preparation for the big – Big games. Sure, sure. He so, played a lot in West Virginia last year, Oklahoma State. The Georgia game where Georgia. there was three wide receivers and a tight end that were drafted. I don't think he guarded the, uh, Nada at all. So, But uh, he did guard some of the, those uh, wide receivers that were drafted last year. And, you know, he's, he's going to be playing that type of athlete. Sure. And he had success against them. So, I, I mean, I, that's what I want to see. I want to see a, a physical presence when the ball's in the air. And I want to see him make tackles in space. That's what I want to see. You know, I, I don't. I don't expect him to have three interceptions or anything like that, no. or be a ball hawk, because that's not his. It, 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 from from what I've seen from the from last year and a little bit of this year, he's not a ball hawk. He's just he, he's he's a good defensive player who can shadow for for two to three seconds. I'm I'm a little concerned with us getting a little too cute on some of the blitzing. Um, I agree, and and I did see some of that in the Louisiana Tech game. I do think. Orlando will be cautious. Cautious, but I think he has some stuff for Orlando in terms of some some fakes, some slants. You know, Joe, Joe Burrow, Joe Brady, um, Steve Ersemeiger, and those all those guys. They they say that they have an answer to every single blitz, and they've seen every single. No, you haven't. Um, but I am concerned that you know there are times where we get out leveraged. Like Brandon Jones had a, like some really unbelievable tackles mm -hmm. where we really could have given up a lot of yards yep. against Louisiana Tech, you know, because of we blitz from the wrong side and they have a screen going the other way. So some of those things do concern me. Uh, and I am concerned about, uh, you know, the hits that Sam will accumulate in the run game. Mm -hmm. um, I know we can be effective there, but at what cost? And I said this with Billy too, and that is something that concerns me because – I'm not just worried about this game. I'm worried about the whole season. I yeah. really am. Like, I want to win the Big 12. That's still my number one goal as a fan. And as much as I want to win this football game, I don't want to, you know, throw him into, you know. Yeah, and it, it, honestly, to tell you the truth, if we lose by two points and then win the rest of the games, we're going to be in the playoffs most likely, I would say. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. Depending on how the rest of the – the rest of the season plays out, yeah. but um, those are those those right there, you know. And then LSU speed is is, is definitely concerned. Yeah, of course, you know. I think I think we match up speed wise, but it it is going to be a speed that we haven't really that we're not accustomed to seeing, even in the Big Twelve. I will I will give them that. Uh, but I also think just as we we we're giving them a lot of respect, but they're not really giving us a lot of respect on the back end in terms of of our physicality and our strength as a football team. And I think they'll be... Are you talking about LSU fan base or are you talking about LSU themselves? I'm talking about their fan base right now. Okay, because I, I don't agree with that. I think I think that they, they are, they're, they're, they're giving us all the respect that they, they know that they're coming. Coach O has. Yes. That's yes. a good okay, point. So, uh, That's a good point. Coach O, because uh, Coach O was very, you know, he actually, outside sick. of calling Colin sick. Johnson, Colin Joseph, yeah. he, he he was pretty dialed well, in on our, our team. Well, you can hardly understand anything he says anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> but uh, but him calling uh, Sam Ellinger. They didn't get the subtitles team, up there. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Ellinger, uh, Tim Tebow, who could pass, you know. It's, that's compliment. That's a that's big time compliment. That's a big time compliment. It's a big time compliment. In so, college I mean, football, absolutely. He's showing us the respect that, that – and, you know, I – I think insults actually come from a place of respect as well. So, you know, and I don't really even think that that was much of an insult that Jason said. 
So, I mean, it, it was just saying, yeah. you know, I'm not really worried nah, about it. No, again, you know. it's, it's, it's um, as Billy was saying, it's banter. Yeah. You know, it's, it's nothing. Uh, what predictions? How are you feeling? I know with Billy, I told I said thirty to twenty-seven. I stand by that. Um, so we, we, where, where are you feeling? <laughs> so, Uh-oh. so of course the. <laughs> Why I, are you laughing so much? No, nah, of course I um chose chose LSU to win, but you you know the reason in why the, every in the single time season yeah, prediction every yeah. single time I choose choose Texas in a big game, whether them to win or lose, the opposite happens. So I did that, but there's a video that you and I did that actually told my true prediction, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, um, we win if. Let me ask you that. Um, good question. If we have over 40 carries and control of time possession. Oh shit! Forty carries. <laughs> yeah, we had forty-six carries. Yeah, we had forty-six rushing. When I say carries, rushing attempts against Georgia, and that's the other thing too. And when I say that, it doesn't mean that we're, we. I don't expect us to throw the ball effectively because that's another thing that RJ said. I want to debunk that we don't. That Tom Herman doesn't like to throw the football, but Sam Ellinger threw for over two hundred yards in both the Oklahoma games, and you know and had twenty-five last touchdowns. Week he had he had, had thirty-eight four touchdown ten, passes. Attempts so, yeah, but three so quarters only. So. That narrative. We're a balanced offense, mm-hmm. but. To establish what we want to do in the pass game, you know, they go hand in hand, right? So if we're able to control the time possession and do what we did and just execute what we do, I think we win the football game. Keeping our penalties down, keeping our turnovers down, not beating ourselves, because I do anticipate LSU making mistakes, running their spread and running their stuff against our speed and and, and matching up, especially when we have our cowboy package on the field when we were able to get them into some third and longs. Another thing that we didn't talk about with LSU too much is the concern with their offensive line. That is a question mark for them, and LSU fans can act like they want to hide it all they want. They've had multiple combinations of starters. I think their left tackle is coming back for this game. But they're, they have to. that's something that they're going to have to address against your boy Coburn, Malcolm Roach. I love, I love Coburn, from, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think – I think him plugging up the middle is fantastic. Oh, how about you? We win if? Um, I actually have two. I think if we hold them to three field goals, okay. whether they make them or miss them, I think that takes away a lot of Freshman time. kicker in Cade York. Yes. But he kicked well last uh, week. Just, just, I mean, average of their possessions, what do you think? What do you think? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, someone could throw that stat out there, but I bet you it's a little bit longer than a minute per per. Uh, it's it's probably it's probably in the two to three minute range. So just right there, that's nine minutes of the game. If and that's only nine points if they, if they get them all. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and I think we'll I think we'll hold the ball 30, 33 minutes. You know, play play keep away. And if we score, I think we'll outscore them that way. And if your prediction's right, if we score thirty points, I think I, I feel a hundred. I feel very comfortable. There's a uh, we went back five years actually for this. And their record for teams that scored 28 or more are uh, nine and three. So, nice. so it's they, they have a 33 percent win chance uh, if you're when you when, you, when yeah. they score 28 or more points. So I take that for data. Yeah. So, I mean that that's that's what I'm looking for is just just cool holding them holding them out of the end zone as much as possible. You know, <laughs> if we keep them keep them to kicking field goals, I'm happy. I'm, Hundred percent happy. I think just to conclude, guys, any questions y'all have in the comments, um, you know, we'll, we'll probably do uh, one more video before the game just to address any other things that we may not have touched on this week, whether it's this video or the video we did with Billy. Um, you know, Strazy, shout out to him, made a comment. I want to give two shout outs. Strazy made a comment that I haven't even replied to yet about having more fan interaction on the channel. I know we not, we haven't been doing a whole bunch of live chats okay. um, or live shows, but ha- answering questions for folks that want us to address certain topics or certain things about the game. So you know we'll do a better job of addressing certain questions. May not be able to address every single yeah. one, but as many as we can get to. Uh, the second shout I want to give is to Tanner Eads, who I actually got to hang out with during the Oklahoma Lucy. Relax. Who, Tanner Eads, who I got to hung out, hang out with my dogs over here <laughs> drinking water during the video. Tanner Eads from Oklahoma, who I got to hang out with watching OU on Sunday night while he was in town. He actually came in town for the uh, 
Texas Louisiana Tech game. Got to meet his family. That's cool. um, hung out downtown, watched the whole Sooners game, did some early scouting. We actually met a very interesting NFL player who will remain nameless. That was a former second round pick in the 2005 draft who uh, told us a lot of very interesting stories and had some very uh, deep thoughts about David Goggins and Andrew Luck. So, um, but Tanner, shout out to you, man. It was a blast and um, can't wait to link up again, whether we go come up to Oklahoma or you come down to Austin. Yeah. Um, so that's all I got, man. Anything else? I'm so no, happy I'm, to have you back. I'm happy to be back and I'm happy to uh, just timing. go downtown. <laughs> go downtown <laughs> and uh, see this game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, I think what we'll do is, because um, we'll be down there tailgating guys, so, um, you know, we'll kind of sh- try to throw out a map on social media of what we're doing and go from there and, and you know, kind of share our schedule. So, yeah, appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Said, what's up? Horn's always up. <laughs>